were both fortunate to be part of the first class of BJC Fellows. We were joined by eight other young professionals from all across the country for a three-day seminar in Colonial Williamsburg. The program impacted all of us in profound ways. I was really influenced by Gowan Pamphlet's story. Pamphlet was one of the first black ministers in the whole country. I was really encouraged to know that John Leland, a Baptist leader, and so many others were present for his ordination. His story really reminded me that Baptists have been a part of the long struggle for racial equality and social justice. And for me, what was most important was the time of fellowship that we had, not just with each other, but as well with the BJC staff. Not only did they attend our lectures, but they were also involved at the table for dinner. Um, during our free time, we rode bikes together. And I think this was important because it allowed us to get to know one another and for them to hear our story and hear where our personal narrative intersects with our passions for religious liberty. Those were just our words. But all of the BJC fellows were affected in personal and profound ways. I think the really unique thing about this program is the context where we find ourselves in Colonial Williamsburg and the opportunity to not only be reading in books and listening in lectures about the history of religious liberty in our country, but to actually walk the streets where um, the Founding Fathers had the same questions that we're wrestling with today. I was fascinated to see that the tour guide we worked with is someone who very particularly focuses on religious history. And so what was really fascinating was to then for the rest of the week as we talked about the history of how religious liberty developed as part of the fabric of the nation to have seen the places where this was happening and where the groundwork was being laid. Jefferson said that when people of reason get together to discuss religion, they typically find more than they can agree upon uh, than disagree upon. This week we had the opportunity to engage with people coming from different perspectives and we found too, gathering with, with people of reason, uh, that we could find more to agree upon when it comes to religious liberty than we disagree upon. My true nerdiness came out and I just appreciated it because you learn so much more and you can experience so much more by actually seeing it and even seeing um, impersonators. It really makes it come to life. We spent a lot of time reading Professor Myerson's book. It's, it's not just this easy blow through read that you, can, that you can knock out in an afternoon. It's got heavy historical facts and things that you need to process. And I was not expecting the person who walked in the room and started lecturing. He is awesome. He is vivacious and one of the best lecturers I've ever had the pleasure to listen to. One of the things that I hope to do is to challenge other clergy and community leaders to understand the importance of religious freedom. Um, coming from a perspective as a woman of color and looking at the history of um, just how this came about in terms of religious freedom and recognizing the importance of everyone's voice. You cannot be a person of color, you cannot be a faith-based person and not be concerned about the needs and concerns of all people. What stuck out to me was the Baptist influence on religious liberty. I feel like um, that had just sort of been grazed over before and I hadn't really learned much about it in depth. I don't think I had any idea just how influential uh, John Leland was on developing religious liberty within the United States. And it really made me proud to be a Baptist. The first thing I'm going to do is preach on religious liberty next Sunday. I can't wait to get to my church so that I can uh, preach. I have so much material over the last few days that I'm going to try to jam pack into a 22 minute sermon. And the second thing I'm going to do is have a time at our interfaith group that our church hosts uh, midweek and share with them about religious liberty because this is something in a pluralistic world that is applicable to all people. Just like Kyle said, we've all found ways to take what we've learned back to our ministerial context. One of the things that I did is that I wrote an article for Baptist News Global on the history of Baptist leaders in the fight for social justice and racial equality. And as my role as a youth minister in Atlanta, I took what I learned and taught my youth about the importance of religious liberty. Because not only does it stand for me and us as a faith community, as a Baptist faith community, but it's important for people of all walks of life and all faiths. For more on our story, visit bjconline.org slash fellows. The BJC Fellows Program is just one way we've been able to connect to the Baptist Joint Committee and become advocates for religious liberty. 
We're honored to be a part of the Baptist Joint Committee's legacy of defending and extending religious liberty for all. And we look forward to continuing to be a part of its work in the future.